both the NBA and Stanley Cup Finals have now completed their Game 2s in their respective series. So let's go over it for a little bit. The Miami Heat winning a classic in Denver, 111-108. to Early in that game, the Heat looking like they were having an improved shooting night in the first quarter. And while that would foreshadow future events, it didn't happen before the Nuggets would storm back to take a commanding lead in the second. And at this point, people are talking about how this is going to be a Denver Nuggets sweep. Both the Miami Heat and the NBA ratings are going to be in the mud. However, the Heat were able to stick around in the second quarter. Uh, the usual suspects playing very well for Miami. I, I feel like Gabe Vincent also played a decent role in the second quarter as well. And they were able to, they, they were still trailing at halftime, but they were able to keep that deficit a very manageable one heading into the third quarter. However, the Nuggets still carried that lead. And I do think heading into the third quarter, the Nuggets were still rolling with a good bit of momentum. Now, in the third quarter, the Nuggets were, were able to maintain a bit of a steady lead. However, I do feel like the Heat in that third quarter were starting to play more of a sustainable and a better kind of game than the Nuggets were having in the third, where Denver was essentially just relying solely on Nikola Jokic to fend off Miami. And for a while, that did work because Jokic was having a, an insane game where, you know, Bam Adebayo, he, he's trying his absolute best and he is pestering Jokic pretty darn well. And he's having very solid games in his own right. But that there's not many players that would that would be unfair to Bam Adebayo to guard. Nikola Jokic is one of those players. He had an insane night. And again, he did fend off the Miami Heat for just about as long as you could, where there were some times where he was playing up against perfect defense, uh, but he would just throw up some some crazy look like a circus shot thinking what is what is going on and, and they would just fall in sometimes it would, it would come with an and one as well so Nuggets still carrying lead into the fourth quarter but once that fourth quarter starts that is when the Miami Heat finally are able to take back the lead and really turn the game around and that takeoff was led by Duncan Robinson of all people and in this game for Miami the veteran presence presences were a factor in this one we had you had Kevin Love starting the game actually he didn't get too many minutes didn't have too many points his shooting numbers don't look great but I do think what he contributed he, he did put in 10 rebounds so he was a factor on the floor and Duncan Robinson early in the fourth he, I think he he scored eight straight points for, for the Miami Heat. It could have been nine, but he missed a free throw on an and one opportunity. And that run by Duncan Robinson, while it didn't give the Miami Heat the lead off of that alone, it definitely made the game pretty much tied, pretty much neck and neck at that point. And it definitely swung favor, it, it swung momentum in the favor of the Miami Heat. Jimmy Butler, I believe he elevated his play in the fourth quarter as well. It's not like he was bad in the first three quarters, but I do feel like he was playing at a level in the fourth quarter that he just wasn't quite there in the first three quarters. And if Jimmy Butler is playing the way that he can, then it just makes the rest of the, that Heat team, they feed off of that energy. And when Jokic wasn't making every crazy shot he threw up, uh, Denver kind of went cold, and I do think the Miami Heat did a really good job of taking advantage. Now, in that fourth quarter, it looked like the Miami Heat were going to take this one comfortably. However, Denver wasn't done yet. They made a very late comeback effort that was just one Jamal Murray jumper going off the rim and out away from forcing overtime. Jamal Murray having not as impactful of a game as he had in game one. However, in that very late comeback effort, he did sink a couple threes. He was very active. So if, we've seen if, if Jamal Murray can get going, the Nuggets can score a lot of points in a very quick fashion. Uh, again, I, I, I mentioned him earlier, but I do think Bam Adebayo, he, he's been consistently solid despite having a matchup to him that is unfair to pretty much anybody in the NBA. So he, he's putting consistently solid performances. I, I imagine guarding Nikola Jokic, especially if, you know, he looks like he's doing all he can and sometimes Jokic, it, it, it just doesn't work. You, you can do all you can and you, you still really can't stop him. To see him work like that has been pretty good, and, and maybe once he is pestering Jokic quite a bit, so maybe what you know, and in, in later in the series that starts to have more of an effect. Now on to the Stanley Cup Finals in Game Two. It was Vegas dominating this one at home, winning seven to two. Vegas having more jump from the get go. Uh, at this point, one of Florida's main issues right now is that Bobrovsky has looked human in this throughout the first two games, and that's become an issue because goalie Bob has been. Uh, a driving force in this run to the finals that the Panthers have had. They, it was very low scoring against Carolina. Both goaltenders in the Eastern Conference Finals were great. Bobrovsky just 
said, you know, they just stone he just stonewalled the Carolina Hurricanes a lot of the time, and that's just not happening with this Vegas Golden Knights team. And the main issue, I don't think he's been, he's not like letting in soft goals or anything, but he hasn't really been able to find his way past the screens that Vegas are setting in this series or that, you know, sometimes it's his own players, it's some Florida Panthers teammates that are kind of just going, go, you know, they're, they're cycling through trying to guard their guys and they're just screening Bobrovsky and, you know, Sergei's not finding his way through those. And again, I don't, I don't think Goalie Bob was necessarily terrible in this game. Florida was just getting mobbed by the Golden Knights. Goalie Bob couldn't see through the screens, and so goals followed. Now, on the other end of the ice, Aiden Hill continuing his run of just insane play. I mentioned that paddle save he had on Nick Cousins in Game 1. In this one, he ha he stopped a breakaway chance from Carter Verhey when that when the game was still very much up in the air. I forget if it was one nothing or 2 nothing, but it was early enough in the game to where that goal could have changed momentum in Florida's favor a lot. And I do feel like that is also something that's going against Florida in this one, where you have those potential momentum momentum shifting plays that were that usually Florida would get to go in throughout this playoff run but Aiden Hill is denying pretty much all of them in this series so far uh, Vegas was scoring two goals in each of the first two periods where Florida didn't score any Bobrovsky pulled after that fourth one which was a beautiful move by Brett Howden to score the fourth one there uh, Florida would score in the opening seconds of the third period. So you, know, you start to mention maybe, maybe Florida just has it in them. We've seen Florida do some crazy stuff. Maybe they have it in them to get four goals in this third period and come back. But that notion was very quickly expelled by Jonathan Marchessault, who's, who scored just a couple minutes after. The game is pretty much over when the score reaches 5-1. to one. But, you know, there would be more hockey to play and the score would be eventually 7-2 to two after a lot of penalties and a lot of game misconducts and a lot of lot of rough stuff after the games are determined. You have to take your pound of flesh on the way out. I will say Vegas has responded very well to the rough style that the Florida Panthers are trying to impose on Vegas. Uh, Florida, I mean, Vegas just definitely seems to be to be equal and up to the challenge of you know, play, playing hot and heavy uh, in this one, where Jack Eichel taking a killer hit from Matthew Kachuk, he would eventually come back and have the assist on that March's old goal, so they, they're showing resilience. Radko Gudis leaving game two after getting rocked by Barbashev, so Vegas is definitely responding very well. They're showing themselves to be a very heavy team. Game three of that series is tomorrow night. It'll be interesting to see for both of these series if the Miami Heat can continue to defy the odds and, and swing momentum in their favor, get take a lead in the series. And for Florida, again, we met, I mentioned that they were they were down 3-1 to Boston. And they came back from that, so they have been in worse uh, mathematical situations. But this Vegas Golden Knights team definitely seems like a different beast than even that Boston team was in this series. So we'll see how Florida is able to do at home with at home ice, or maybe they can they can feed off of their crowd's energy. Uh, but where Vegas, their home home ice advantage is definitely real for Vegas so far. But anyway, it'll see be it'll be interesting to see how those go. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it this far into it, I will see you at the next one.